Gonna build another project with a new Raspberry Pi. Put it into this robot that I'm building. For the Ricoh Theta or the SC2, which is about $300. The SC2B, which is basically an identical camera with slightly different firmware. The image sensors, the weight of the camera, all the same. It's about $330. The Theta V, which is actually a different platform from the SC2 and the SC2B, which this is great for developers. It's about $370. Or the premium model, which is the Z1, which is $1,000, takes excellent pictures, has a better processor, everything's better about it. The only downside here is the cost. For this project, I'm going to try to use the cheapest model, which is the SC2. It takes good pictures. Quality is, is quite good. Uh, it does take eight seconds to take a, a picture and store it internal to the camera versus about four seconds for the Z1. You can do these tests yourself. If you take an HDR on this camera, the SC2, just to save it to internal storage will take about 10 seconds, possibly 11 seconds. And then there's the time taken required to download it to your mobile device, or in my case, the Raspberry Pi. I just ordered this on Amazon. I haven't opened it up yet. It's about $25 to $30 in the United States. It's a case. I don't know if the SC2 is gonna fit into it, so let's give it a shot. The label does say Rico Theta weatherproof, not waterproof uh, case on this thing. This case, I think it's like $25. It doesn't specify the model, right? So the models are different sizes. So we'll see where the SC2 fits in here. Not the same case as the TW2. This case is fairly expensive. I think it's over $100. And it's, this case is waterproof. This is not the case I'm using. So if you're using this case in your project, it's not designed to be submerged and be waterproof. But let's see whether the SC2 fits it. And at least it'll keep the rain off of the camera if I have it outside. The SC2 does fit. There is no way to access the USB port of the SC2 while it's in here. Although people have drilled a hole through this case to access the uh, USB port and keep the camera charged. With this technique, I'm just going to mount it. I'll have to use the charge off of the battery in order to use it uh, for this example. I'm going to control the camera with the Wi-Fi API, also known as the Web API of it. Mount here, uh, it's pretty stable. It's a quarter inch times 20 thread per inch. The SC2 does fit. This robot does have a Raspberry Pi controller. I'm going to uh, build the script out on it separately. And so let's take a look at the code. Let me show you how I'm going to develop this thing. I've actually got the Raspberry Pi out of the robot right now. This is the uh, Theta SC2. It's plugged in to uh, the Raspberry Pi with a USB cable just for just to charge it. I'll do a test to make sure that the API is working. And then I'm gonna SSH into the Raspberry Pi and do development from there. On the Raspberry Pi, I have two uh, network devices. One's the ethernet, so this is my, I'm getting out to the internet this way, and also SSH from this uh, IP. And then there's the, the WLAN module that's attached to the Raspberry Pi, and that's how I'm getting access to the Theta. So the Theta is gonna be at So 192.168.1.1. So I can ping the theta. I can verify that it's connected and that it's a theta by just sending a, a curl to 192.168.1.1 slash OSC info. So I'm getting the, the model number of the theta here, SC2. I'll put this on a screencast so it's easier to read. Just to show you that I can access both the theta and the internet. So 
So this is going out over the internet and this is the theta. On Windows 10, my Windows 10 uh, computer is on the same network as the one of the interfaces of the Raspberry Pi. So right now it looks like I'm on Linux, but that's because I'm using WSL2. I'm going to SSH into the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, which from the last uh, video segment, you could if you recall, is 192.168.2.101, I believe. And then input the password of the Raspberry Pi. So now I'm on the Raspberry Pi and I could see my files. To make it easier, we have a little tool here. So this just requires your email and if you go to this section here, you can get the command line tester tool and then grab the assets here. I'm going to grab Raspberry Pi. I'm going to download it to my Win 10 computer. It's already downloaded. And then I'm going to transfer it to the Raspberry Pi on Windows. You can tell that from WSL2, you can access your Windows files from uh, this uh, mount C. I only have one drive here, right? So from the uh, Windows File Explorer, this is the file. It's the same file. I'm just going to use S copy to uh, push it over. So the syntax S copy, S C P, secure copy. It's the name of the file. It's right here. Raspberry Pi Theta dot zip. I just downloaded from the internet with a Chrome, and then Pi at the IP address of my Raspberry Pi home Pi is my home directory password in file is pretty small so it's a pretty quick transfer here so this is the Raspberry Pi and the file is here so I can now move it over into a, uh, a projects directory and uh, then I'll start using this tool You can start using the tool from this directory. Uh, assuming it's connected to the camera. That will show the info of the camera. You can grab the state of the camera. You can uh, take a picture with the camera here too. Uh, available help is uh, hyphen up and help. I changed my path on the Raspberry Pi so that I can just type theta instead of dot slash theta. Now I can just do theta. I'm going to take a picture and download it. So it takes it from the camera. Uh, I have the a program set up so that it checks the status ID of the camera. It should take hopefully about uh, well, 11 seconds this time and then it downloads it. It's on the Raspberry Pi now. It's, it's in this directory. Uh, we could see it on the Raspberry Pi if we had it on a monitor or we could bring it down to Windows to uh, view it. It's on Windows and I've just used SFDP to I'm going to pull it down from the Raspberry Pi. There's other ways to get it, but this one will work. So I have it here on the image is here. So if I open it up with the Theta app. You can see that it's a 360 image. The camera's here in the test setup. You can see the screen. This directory script examples, uh, there's a couple of things. Uh, one of this dev setup script, which I'm going to run, it's going to disable auto power off, auto sleep. It's going to set the shutter volume to medium, a bunch of other things. It will show the 
current battery level, current firmware of the camera. These are uh, relatively simple bash scripts where you can just type the So anything with a pound sign in front of it, this type of number sign is a comment. The thing to focus on is uh, to set the off delay off, right? So the camera does not power, auto power off. You go off delay, a theta off delay, hyphen hyphen off. And this is in the help as well too. Anything starting with an echo just puts it to the screen. So that this word here, auto power off the label is auto, is right here. So to set sleep delay off is just sleep delay hyphen hyphen off. Shutter volume off, shutter volume to medium is hyphen hyphen medium. You can write all the commands into a file, save it or modify the file, and then uh, run run the same script at any time. So if I want to run it again, it will um, bash on Raspberry Pi dev underscore setup sh, and it'll run the same script again. So in this example, I'm going to, it says Z1, I'm going to use it for the SC2. I have a script here to take, um, set some settings on the camera, and right now it's taking 500 shots, or 300 shots here. So is this, anything with a number sign in front of it, or a hash mark, it's a comment. So the key here is, right here for the counter, um, Maybe just for a time, I'll, I'll set it to take a hundred pictures instead of I just modified it from 300 pictures to 100 pictures. So this is just the first picture, and it just it's like a progress indicator here, where the SC2 actually takes about eight seconds to take a normal non HDR picture. So that was the first picture, and you can see it downloaded it to the Raspberry Pi. So it's actually writing the individual uh, files here. Actually, the SE2 did not work in the previous test and I just switched the camera to the Z1. So on picture uh, 98 it looks like. And it should stop after 100 pictures. It's now downloading the uh, thumbnails onto the, the Raspberry Pi. So, so with one command, we could set the uh, Z1 to take 100 pictures or 500 pictures. I've tested it at work. So we could send the, the robot out to a location and have it constantly take pictures, start and stop it. And we'll get into more of these scripts uh, in the future. but. Uh, just to let you know that the SE2 unfortunately did not work in the in the test.